the toxic threat of abandoned uranium mines in the United States. It's time. Clean up the mines. You can go to www.cleanupthemines.org. Hashtag clean up the mines. Petitions and online actions to clean up the mines. The nuclear industry is a many-headed toxic beast. Nuclear power and nuclear weapons are just the most visible ones. Mining, milling, processing, reprocessing. The thousands of decaying daughters. The manufacturing and the transporting of nuclear materials and some other heads of the beast that are less visible. All are desecrating our mother earth and killing her peoples. It's time to deal with the initial stage of this problem. We can begin by cleaning up this abandoned uranium mines and placing a national environmental security moratorium on all uranium extraction. Irresponsible corporations or negligent government agencies have abandoned more than 10,000 toxic uranium mines throughout the United States. 10,000. These hazardous mines poison our air, our land and water and harm the public health. Currently, no laws require cleanup of these dangerous sites. A new campaign, Clean Up the Mines, aims for the remediation of these mines through federal legislation and action on public education. Abandoned uranium mines, they call them OMS, AUMS, the Environmental Protection Agency, and U.S. Geological Survey document over 10,000 abandoned uranium mines in the U.S. Most are in the 15 western states on public, private, and tribal lands. So when the manifest destiny happened and we pushed those Indians out of the eastern states, they pushed them over to these western states, a lot of these abandoned, hard-to-live areas, desert-like, and that where some of the, a lot of these uranium deposits are. So imagine they got pushed right into a corner and then the water and the food that they're drinking, they have some of the highest cancer rates in the country. Over 4,200 of these mines produce uranium that was sold to the U.S. Atomic Energy Commission for use in nuclear weapons from the 1940s to the 70s. Starting in the 60s, much of these mining was done to provide the fuel for nuclear power plants. There are several arms, abandoned uranium mines near around the Grand Canyon. 169 of them are within 40 miles of Mount Rushmore. Right at the edge of the Grand Teton, Yellowstone National Park. One in seven people in the western U.S. live within 50 miles of an abandoned uranium mine. The Mining Act of 1872 governs hard rock mining including uranium mining on federal land. Since enactment 142 years ago, the law has never been substantially modified. It was passed to encourage settlement and development of the western U.S. and current government interpretation specifies the highest and best use of federal land is mining. 75% of the arms are on federal and tribal land. There is no royalty paid for mining on federal lands and no environmental protection or cleanup requirements on federal land. That's right, let's make it a state park called Uranium Park. Many of the companies who own the land or operate the mines no longer exist. Others have illegally spun off these toxic assets into non-bankrupt companies or just flush right down the river. The result? The people must pay the billions and trillions of dollars to restore most of these sites. So they're now on the hook. We are. There is also no federal set of best practices or standards for cleanup. As a result, most of the EPA directed cleanup efforts are nothing more than toxic landscape. Alms hazardous and contaminous pathways. The abandoned uranium mine pathway. Physical hazards of the alms come from unmarked, unprotected mine entrances, cliffs, falling rocks, and collapsing buildings and equipment. Wind picks up radioactive dust from rock piles and blows it for miles. People breathe fine particles into their lungs, resulting in much higher levels of lung cancer near these abandoned uranium mines. People carry the radioactive dust, dirt, and mud around on their clothes and shoes, spreading the contamination to their families in the home. 
one of the decay elements of uranium is radon gas. It seats up through the ground in many areas around the mine sites where people and animals breathe it in. Exposure to radon gas is the second leading cause of lung cancer in the United States. Water picks up radiation in a variety of ways. The rain washes radioactive dust from the air, rocks, and carries it up in the streams and rivers. Surface and underground water dissolve uranium from the rock into dust. This is particularly true of uranium that has been exposed to oxygen, which then changes to uranium, which is more soluble in water. This is a principle used similar to fracking techniques, the method most commonly used now. The result is polluted rivers, lakes, and aquifers with no safe available drinking water for thousands of communities. That's right. People don't have a right to water, that's what they say. You have no right to clean water. Pools and lakes of contaminated water contribute to bringing radioactivity into the food chain. Our food supply, the cattle and wild animals can drink this toxic water, concentrating radiation in their organs, which is called bioaccumulation. The plants and areas surrounding these abandoned uranium mines take up the radioactive waste as well. Whether grown for crops or eaten by animals, the radiation continues to bioaccumulate and spread up the food chain. On the Spokane Indian Reservation in Eastern Washington State, there are two lakes collecting water from the arms that are so acidic that if you dip a spoon in it, it will melt. Uranium often occurs with other toxic heavy metals and over time is contaminated, water flows out of the arms and into a lake. Evaporation and replenishment by more contaminated water gives off extreme concentrations of toxic and radioactive heavy metals. The EPA has estimated the mining has polluted 40% of the headwaters of western watersheds. 40% of rivers in the west are polluted for mining uranium public health emergency people living near the uranium mines face increased rates of cancer diabetes kidney disease hypertension thyroid disease autoimmune diseases such as arthritis and lupus birth defects because so many of these mines are on near indigenous lands The Indian people continues in many indigenous communities. No safe drinking water is available. The EPA has closed 22 wells on the Navajo Nation due to unsafe levels of radioactivity. Site visits investigation in South Dakota. A cleanup of the mines. Teams visited by the Mount Rushmore are part of our Earth Day. Launch of the campaign. The Geiger counter measurement at the National Monument main viewing area was 30 micrograms per hour, higher than normal because of the 169 alms within 50 miles of the monument. Millions of tourists unknowingly face exposure to this toxic threat by breathing in radioactive dust and radon gas by one of America's most beautiful monuments. In Riley Pass, one of the largest abandoned uranium mines in South Dakota, the deadly effect of the mine was apparent. As the group approached this bluff, the tree line ended abruptly at the edge of the mine. Although Riley Pass is designated as a Superfund site, signs of the water runoff from the arm were visible. The uranium mine runoff was visible. No barriers or fences prevented people or animals from accessing parts of this hazardous site. This is a site where the toxic landscaping was done, leaving very high levels of radioactivity to poison the water and the soil of the area. At a small community of Ludlow, the group measured radioactivity with a Geiger counter at an elementary school playground that was 44 micrograms per hour. This is the equivalent of more than 150 counts per minute over the 100 CPM threshold, which means it cannot be attributed to background radiation and is not safe. private abandoned open pit uranium mine about 200 meters from the school emits 1170 micrograms per hour more than four times as much as being emitted from the Fukushima nuclear power plant in Japan this is only one abandoned open pit uranium mine in the middle of the United States 
four freaking times higher than Fukushima. What the eff? Chairman Whiteface, a scientist and coordinator defenders of the Black Hills, facilitated the campaign launch event for the American public to be exposed to the radioactive pollution and not being warned by federal and state government is unconscionable, stated Whiteface. Whiteface is looking out for you. Shame on the American federal and state governments for allowing their citizens to be placed in such danger for more than 50 years and not stopping the source of the danger. It is a national travesty. She noted that according to her doctor, thyroid cancer rates are 10 times higher than the national average in western South Dakota. The mines are a silent health threat. Millions of people are at risk of breathing and ingesting radioactive particles that travel through the air, water, and settle in soil where they enter our food supply. In every community we visited, we heard the people are dying of cancer and have other serious diseases caused by the radioactive contamination. They are very concerned over the lack of information about the abandoned uranium mines and the lack of action to remedy them. Babies are born with severe multiple birth defects. When we visited Red Shirt Village in Southeast South Dakota, we heard from Dennis Yellow Thunder, Suex tribe. His family, including his daughter, used the water for drinking and for bathing. His granddaughter was born with multiple birth defects. If we don't defend our sacred water, it will be the end of us all, he said. We must support this campaign to clean up the mines. We need to protect this land our water in the sacred Black Hills. We need to do it from our heart. The water serving this area is heavily contaminated with technology enhanced uranium from mining and milling waste rather than how it occurs naturally in the ground. And even more with thorium, the first element in decay of uranium, without water nothing can exist, said Charmaine Whiteface. In Buffalo, 20 miles from Ludlow, 12 people out of about 600 living nearby now have brain tumors. Experts from the Mayo Clinic said the only way people will get these are from breathing uranium. Copper sulfide is being fed to cattle so that their fur will be brown or black instead of gray from the radiation. Holy moly. Sheep can't live there because their immune systems won't tolerate the radiation. Most ranchers can't afford to move from this toxic area. So they're feeding copper to the cattle to not show their gray coat. Sandra Cunny Buffeton, a rancher who resides in the Red Shirt community, maintains a herd of cattle in the Badlands. She lived at the river until it wasn't possible anymore because of contamination. She spoke of high rates of cancer in the area. We know we are contaminated, but where are we going to go? I don't know of any other life than the one that I have lived. As crazy as it sounds, you learn how to live with it. A banned uranium mine cleanup act. Clean up the mines was established by defenders of Black Hills and popular resistance to the past uranium exploration, mining accountability, and moratorium acts. The abandoned uranium mine cleanup act of 2014. The act will maintain a complete inventory of all existing abandoned uranium mining and exploratory sites. Direct the Environmental Protection Agency to create a new abandoned uranium mines department to develop an action plan for site-specific reclamation of abandoned uranium mines and exploratory sites. Place a National Environmental Security Moratorium on any processing or approval of new permits for uranium exploration, mining, and leaching operations until the action plan is completed. Institute a program of public education on the dangers of abandoned uranium mines and mandate accountability of enforcement and public oversight to ensure cleanup of abandoned uranium mines. The cleanup of the mines team visited congressional offices and support organizations in Washington, D.C. You learn more about this campaign and what we can do to clean up the mines, you can visit cleanupthemines.org. Please contact your senators and representatives and encourage them to support the Abandoned Uranium Mine Cleanup Act.